Hello and welcome. This is a video about the action essentials. In the previous courses, you've learned how to set up a dynamic front end in which you can manage your data. However, we can also use little machines called actions to trigger certain steps, which you can normally only do via, for example, an update form. With our project, we might want to change the status of the project, and it would be quite tedious to do this with your update form every time. It would be cool if we have our project overview in front of us and we were just able to press a button to start our project or to finish our project. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do that by using actions. So let's dive into the action course. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to dive into the actions environment. You can find this by clicking on the orange logo on the left hand side of your builder bar. This is the action icon, the lightning bolt. We're going to click on the hamburger menu to open up our actions overview. And as you can see, some actions have already been created in here. You might have already seen this by setting your action permissions when we created forms in our front end. And right now we're going to open one up. So let's open up the project create form. Well, as you can see, this is the action overview. On the left hand side, we have all kinds of functions and well, these functions can be used to drag them into your action flow. And once in here, you have an action flow with all kinds of steps. So what happens with an action is you have a start, then something happens. It can be one action step, it can be multiple steps, and then we have a finish, an output, so to say. Well, this is the start for the project create form. So that means that we have our project create form. The data from our project create form gets put in as an input variable. Then our create record step uses all of this data to create actual records in our database. As you can see, it uses the values from our page builder form and puts these into our database. So it matches the items from our front end to the items in our database and then it says like, well, hey, you know what? You got it and then it uh, well pops out as a usable record in your application. And then, well, there's a finish uh, which provides you with a nice new record of project data. And in this video, we are going to create two new actions ourselves. And we're going to be doing that in our pages projects overview. So open up the projects overview and here we are going to add two new actions. The first action that we are going to add is a delete action because we can make projects, but what if we want to delete one? Well, we previously added the button over here, but for now we're just going to remove this and we're also going to remove the dialogue that got added. So let's remove all of that, the box as well. And then we're going to be adding a new button. So we're going to search in our components for action and then we have the action button in here. So I'm going to drag this in the box and well, it currently looks a little, uh, out of touch compared to our info button that goes to the detail page. But let's style this a little bit so that it also looks like a delete button. So we're going to remove the button text. And then we're going to select the delete icon. I'm not sure if it's a delete, it's actually called delete. So let's select a bin for that. And well, we have saved our button styles previously. So let's also open up the button styles and turn it into the data table button. There we go. So now we have a button that's very similar to our nice detail view and it also shows a little bin so that we know, ooh, watch out with clicking that because that most of the time means deleting something. So now what we need to do when we are on this page is we want to give some data to our action builder, to our little machines, so that it knows it needs to do something with it. Well, that something is defined by the action steps but we need to give something to our action. And we can do that by pressing the action button and then saying pass value to action. And we're going to pass the ID from the row, from a data table row, we're going to pass that to our action. So click on pass value to action, select project and then ID and press select. So now we have passed the project ID to our action. And now we can actually start building inside of this action button and say what we want it to do. And we can do that by 
clicking on the pencil icon next to the action option within our component option. So here we go, press the pencil, and this is our action overview again. In the action overview, the first thing we are going to do is we dive into the action settings. This is so that we can immediately give our action a nice name, such as delete project action, making sure that we always know in which action we are working. And beneath that, we have a description saying runs when the action button is clicked. I actually quite like this description because it gives us, us and the other developers a note for when this action is triggered. So we can save that and then dive into the accessibility tab because this is a private action, meaning that you can only trigger it in your pages once you are logged in and have a specific role. However, we do need to select the authentication profile and the roles that we want to allow to press this button. So in this case, we have to select the authentication profile. This is the profile which is used to lock your user in. There's only one option, the web user profile, so make sure to select that. And we can also select who we want to allow to perform the action. So in this case, the admin and the web user. You can also say, you know what, I only want to allow admins to be able to delete a project and only leave the admin role checked for this action. However, since we also want to check it ourselves and we are web users in our application, I'm going to check both to the green mark for now. Here we go. Save this and dive into how we're going to build up this delete project action. We initially have a start and we have a finish. By the start, we are giving our ID that we've selected in the front end to our action. We want to turn this into something targetable, an, an entire project, an object in that case. And well, at the end, at the finish line, we want this project to be deleted because that is what a delete action does. So we click on the start option and in here, we need to define what we are putting in. So we're going to press add. And in here, we are selecting a record because the ID that we have passed through from the front end can now be turned into an actual project. M make sure to also name this ID because we are passing the ID from front to the back and we need to make sure that we have the exact same name. So in here, I'm writing down ID because that is the name of the ID variable that we are passing through. And we are connecting this to the project model. Press save, and now we can use this record in the rest of our action steps when we add any. So in this case, I'm going to drag the delete record function to the action flow. And here I can select the record that we've just put in. So here you go, select ID and press save. And now we have in theory, a working delete action. So we press start, we, pre we trigger a button, the action deletes the record, and then we have a finish, which means no more projects. So that is the first action that we create for our project management overview. Now, the second action that we are going to create is the update project action or the start project action because it's nice if we can start the project by just simply pressing a button instead of having to go to the detail view of the project every time and selecting that status, setting it to in progress, pressing save. No, we can just simply do that with a button. So let's add that one as well. We are going to do that by scrolling down to the button section, we're going to grab the action button and we're going to drag that in between the detail navigation button and the delete button we previously created. We're going to do the same as we did with the delete button. We're going to remove the text. We're going to select a nice icon. That means that we're starting something. I think that the arrow forward is a nice icon for this. And make sure to apply the data table button style in the style section that we've created previously. So now we have three buttons. However, it might not necessarily well, speak for itself whatever these buttons do. So to help our users out with that, we can add tooltips to our buttons. We can do that by scrolling down in the action button options, and there you have the tooltip section. And here you can say toggle tooltip to show you what it looks like. And as you can see here on the right-hand side, you see tips popping up. Well, we can change the word tips to 
start project. And now whenever someone hovers over this button, they will see the words start project, meaning that well, when you click this button, you start the project. So this button should also pass the ID of the project to the action. So let's make sure that we select the value to the action, press project, ID, select. And now that we've set this up, we can go to our action and do the same as we've done for the delete button. First, go to settings, give the action a nice name, start project action, save, and go to the accessibility tab because we want to make sure that our web user profile and our admins connected to that profile and our web users connected to that profile are allowed to trigger this action. Press save, close this tab, and then we're going to retrieve our input variable again. So create an input variable of the type of the kind record, give it the name ID and select the project model. If you are creating an action for the task model, the same goes. So you input the task idea via your button, you select the model task and then name idea and so on for every other action that you want to create that uses some data from a data container in your front end. Make sure that you use the name corresponding to the data that you're putting through. Press save. And now we can start updating our project. So drag the update record function into your application flow, into your action flow. And here you go. Between start and finish, we now update our record. And what, what are we going to do? We are going to update the status of our project from to do to in progress. So we select our project, which is called ID in this case. And we are going to add a property, a, a value a mapper. Here you go. Select status and then type in in progress as the value that we are updating it to. So the status from a project is going to be updated with the value that we insert in here. And this is, will be put out as a record, save. So the output can be used in case you want to use this updated record somewhere else in your flow, but we're going to get there a little later. Now we can select the output variable here as well save and now well what do we have at the start of the action we put the idea in we turn this into an object that we can well manipulate in this case we update the record that's called a manipulation and then well we update the record with a new status and the output is a nicely updated record so now we have created the first two actions Let's dive into our page and make one last change to the buttons and then test these actions. What I would like is that whenever I press any of these buttons, the start project button or the delete button, is that my data table is auto also automatically refreshed. Because right now, if I press this button, I will have to refresh my page, myself, the page myself before I can actually see that something has changed. And well, that's not as user friendly as we would like it to be. So we click on the delete button, go to interactions, just like we did in the last page builder course videos, and we create a new interaction. We're going to create the on action success action. So we select a new interaction with more than on action success. I would like to refetch my data table. So on action success, refetch the data table. Safe, and we're going to do the same for the start project action button. Select the action button, go to the interactions, open up a new interaction. When I more on action success, the action button. So whenever something happens from the action button, in this case, on action success, refetch the data table, meaning you're going to, well, retrieve the data from the data table a new and that means that if this button works so if we updated the status or if we deleted something 
within our project, that new row of data should actually be gone or updated. Well, we have created these action buttons. We have connected the data that we want to parse to from the front end to our action. We have set the permissions for the action. We have made sure that interactions let this flow nice and smoothly. So let's test the page out by pressing compile. And here we go. Well, the project overview opens up. Let's create a new project and see if we can immediately update that and also delete that. So create new project, new project, test, action. Just give it a nice name. Select myself as the project lead, press send. Well, it's been created. That's wonderful. Dive into the project view. And let's go to this new project test action. So if I press this button, the status should go from to do to in progress. Give me a drum roll. And there we go. The status changes from in progress or from to do to in progress. But that also means that if we press delete in here, that this action, that this project should actually be gone. And it is. So that means that we have two functioning actions for our first bit. In the next video, we're going to uh, extend one of the actions and we are going to create a last action and we're going to look at the condition and the looping steps to make our actions a little more secure and broad. So see you there.